Right, and that that's kind of I mean we we have a little bit of a, a different offensive system right now that we've had in the past, mostly because of COVID. You know, I was a little bit nervous to. I've been in situations so much in the past as well where it wasn't COVID, but we had a lot of injuries, and we might all of a sudden not even have a point guard to play. Um, or, you know, we don't have a post. And so being able to kind of adjust some things, um, you know, offensively and still have allow people not to worry about set plays all the time, um, just being able to play in space and make good reads. And I thought we did a good job of that today. Um, you know, I, I think giving Lowe some opportunity, we gave Lauren a little opportunity. And, um, you know, will those kids be in our rotation? I don't know. I mean, you, you got to kind of earn your playing time, certainly. Um, and they had an opportunity. Uh, so we'll just evaluate the film and um, just work on getting better for sure. Especially we fouled a little mu too much early, which put some people on the bench. Our next question is from Brian Calloway. Hey, Coach, you talked about you know, Bryce popping out there and Kendall was one of those. Can you talk a little bit about her and just you know, how she's kind of navigated life and being the only freshman in the program as well, too? Yeah, I said this on the radio. I mean, her work ethic is off the charts, and, and she's in great shape too, Brian. I think, you know, I say that all the time, and you can't be an elite player or think you're going to be a great player night in and night out if you're fighting your lungs and battling your conditioning. So she's someone that really came in here and committed to, you know, making sure she's in great shape, but also is um, in the gym all the time. You know, she comes in here on her own. Uh, she works out quite a bit with Coach Dean. She has allowed her to play multiple positions for us as a freshman, which is pretty unusual. Um, but, you know, her work ethic is off the charts. I mean, she's very passionate about being getting better every day. Um, she, she is someone that calls the coaches and asks, like, what can she do to get better? Um, I don't know. I just really appreciate someone that's a sponge that really – um, has invested in themselves. You know, again, you can't be a great player if you're, um, you know, just want to have a minimal effort sometimes. And so the one thing about her is she gives us 100% effort in practice when it's required, but she also adds in the extra time in the gym, and you can see it paying off. So we're really proud to have her. Yeah, I, well, I think it's a really good line to start out when you have 15 points and 10, on, and 10 assists. I mean, starting out as a double-double is kind of what you want your first team all-conference player to do. I mean, Nia's just, um, she's got ice in her veins. Um, you know, I think she's somebody that, I mean, we certainly have a lot more things we could have done for her tonight. Um, but as we're playing such early Big Ten games and other games, I think we have to be, you know, we we're just trying to let other people play a little bit. Nobody played over 30 minutes, but also just um, let some things happen in, in the flow of the game um, so that we can kind of keep working on some of the things that we need to be able to uh, have down the stretch. But, I mean, she's just – I mean, Nia's – it kind of starts and ends with a great point guard. You know, I think at the end of the day, uh, if you don't have that position um, and when you have someone special like that that can not only score themselves – but pass the ball, I think that makes a huge difference. Our next question comes from Manit Patel. Hey, Coach. So, um, I, you guys, like, really locked down St. Francis on defense, holding around 35% shooting, 19% from three. Um, how do you guys look to carry that over to future games, including Detroit Mercy next week? Well, I mean, I, I, if I had to say I was – I know it sounds crazy, but I was not very pleased with, like, defensively some of the things that we had breakdowns on, um, you know, just especially guarding the ball. I think we have to just continue to get better. I thought we fouled too much too soon. And, again, we, we don't have the luxury of doing that right now with some kids that are out. But, um, you know, it's a starting point. I think the film doesn't lie, as they say, and I think it's an opportunity for kids to kind of see – again, where they can get better. Um, and I think your defense uh, is something that, you know, will continue to get better and it's something we're going to um, do a better job of focusing on. I think we've worked really hard with so many new faces um, and a little adjustment on the offensive end that, you know, we really are working on that side of the ball a little bit more, which is a good thing, but it might have affected our ability to do some things that we normally do a little bit better. Um, rebounding is a concern of ours and something we got to continue to get a little more physical and a little more physicality as well. Our next question comes from Liam Jackson. Uh, hi, Coach. Uh, I talked about Kendall being a sponge. I was wondering, I saw on, on, uh, she looked like she was communicating well on defense uh, um, for anyone, let alone a freshman. I was wondering how you thought that's going to project coming into Big Ten play against better competition and how that's going to translate to them. 
Yeah, I mean, she really, she has a high IQ for the game already. I mean, that certainly stems from a lot of things. I mean, her mom played at Indiana, her dad played, um, they're both coaches. She's kind of a coach's kid, played in a really good program in Indiana um, and an AAU program that was very team oriented. I, you know, you don't always say that about AAU programs, but the one she played in, um, their coach does a really good job of sharing the ball and they do have some talented players, but they played well together. And I think Kendall sees the value of that, but she certainly, she just outworks people and she plays with such, you know, toughness and um, really pushes the envelope in transition. She, she's, she can get to the boards. She catches it high, keeps it high. She's multi-dimensional. She can shoot the three. She's really good at reading defenses and making the extra pass. And as you mentioned, part of communication as a freshman is usually something they don't have, but she really understands the game. And like I said, comes from um, a family that really understands basketball and has taught her from a young age how to play as well as the coaches in her life. So she's above and beyond most freshmen at this time. Yeah, I mean, we really love Tori's versatility, and um, she's in. Uh, it's another kid that's really committed to, you know, her to getting stronger this off season, and is in really good shape, and and is versatile. I mean, she's a big guard. She's six one, and she can be physical down there with uh, defensive box outs. She can run in transition. She's got a little bit of everything to her game. So, I mean, this is the next level, right? So, I say this all the time: is that junior class, that, that sophomore, like Mo Joyner, those kids that have a lot of experience, it's time for them to step up and be really aggressive when it comes to being part of the offense and being relied on. You know, I think a lot of people want that role of being the man and score a lot of points, but, you know, we don't need, she's been a complimentary player to a lot of really good players around, and she's, she's you know, a tremendous asset, but now you see her looking to score the ball a little bit more and be a little bit more significant offensively, which we're going to need her to do, her and Mo Joyner as well. Yeah, she had a cramp, actually. It was a calf cramp, I think, or upper leg, so she's fine, yep. So thankfully, I didn't see what happened, but she came down there and uh, ended up being a, a muscle cramp. So I guess for us, that's a good thing when I've, I think I've had three that are, have already had surgery, so we're hopeful that, you know, nobody has to cut into anybody anymore on our team at this point. Um, so, I mean, it was really good to see her bounce back, give her a rest, and get her back out there, so she's going to be fine. Yeah, we'll take it. I mean, certainly that's something that we would look for is to get that spark off the bench and get a rotation. Again, I mean, I'm hopeful that we get a few more people um, here that can come in and, and help us. And so, um, but it's a good starting point. I mean, like I said, there's a lot to learn. Um, you know, I thought the kids that, um, that were consistent tonight are the kids that have been consistent in practice too, that really commit to um, the gym time and spend extra time um, out there. I mean, I'd love to see that. That's like what everybody, every coach's dream is to have a bench that contributes like that, especially. So, um, well, something to build on and something to be prideful about for sure. All right, coach, that's it. Uh, thanks for your time today. Okay, thanks, Matt. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Stay safe.